it will still run in electric mode um, until the battery pack gets down to about 10 percent so it'll allow it to go lower the disadvantage of that is you can board your warranty if you can do that but we don't care about that kind of thing and there's a woman in california i've forgotten her name now she's involved with a garage called luscious garage so if you go online and you look at luscious uh, search for luscious and prius um, you'll find her website and I believe she's worked out a mod that allows you to drive your Prius in all electric mode up to 50 miles an hour because the stock car, once you get to 30, the engine wants to come on. Again, it's designed not because the motors can't cope, the motors are rated up to 10,000 RPM. It's not because they're not capable of doing it, it's because Toyota don't want, A, don't want you to drive it in electric mode, but B, they don't really want you uh, to damage it and, and cause it any other problems. So um, what, what she's done is she's modified the car and she's done some kind of, uh, of CAN bus error. She's created a, a duplicate a device that will duplicate the CAN bus error to say I've run out of petrol. <laughs> and what it does is you turn it on and you turn it on, you have to turn it on in specific mode and it allows you to drive the car up to 50 miles an hour. The only problem is when you need to turn the engine on, you have to stop the car and reboot it. And I'm not joking. <laughs> Prius owners talk about booting your car up. And I'm sure in a second video we'll show you how you boot the Prius up um, <laughs> over there. So what I've already done here today, it doesn't crash, unfortunately. Um, I, I think it would be a lot more fun if it did. Um, so what I'm going to do today, I'm just, I've actually cheated um, because all of the stuff I've installed, I've already done. So here, and what it does is it makes the car thing install the mini disc player, which is quite nice. And then it converts the commands from the steering wheel into commands that you can use to run your appropriately hacked iPhone. Um, I've currently got various applications on here. Uh, the plan is eventually to, to put a serial port on here to talk to the can view, which will be installed later on. So anyway, I'll put this to one side. Um, to nope. install this... Would that, 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 would that let you be a backseat driver? Uh, it's funny, people have said, um, people have actually, I've, I've said that this car could make an ideal remote control car project because it has a servo, it's electric power steering, it's fully drive by wire, there's no physical connection other than the steering column. There's no physical connection between me and the road. Um, and Kate's car, we might uh, later on show everyone this, Kate's car has actually got a reverse feature where it will park itself. Again, the computer is only good as the person who programs it, so if you program it badly, you'll crash it. If you program it correctly, it will park itself. So what I'm going to do now is, this is the back of the head unit, as you can see, I'm dropping it here. Now, this is an older one with a cassette adapter. And in the back here, we've got your aerial connector coming in, and um, your power leads and whatnot coming in there. Now this is the, the head connector that we're going to adapt and we've got this Y, y adapter here, previously made up. And what we do is this is to add the additional input. So we just plug that in like so, make sure it's in. See? Now I did quite a lot of research on, on interfaces for this car and came to the conclusion that, that this one was the best because it enabled me to retain all of the features from my original car without having to worry about um, you know, losing uh, something or screwing the car up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pop this back in so now basically what it does is it takes it's got two two functions it's got three functions this one this here is a it looks like a, a kind of a serial port really it's actually the guy's using a strange connector for rgb crossing and it will accept an external video input so i, I don't know if anybody heard about the mac prius or the Prius PCs and projects like that, where you take a Mac Mini and you, the Mac Mini, believe it or not, fits perfectly in here. <laughs> All right. And Norm doesn't normally put RGB interfaces on, but his, his equipment has a circuitry, so I actually asked him to put one on for me. And provided you can find a device that will convert your standard output into uh, an NTSC, because it's obviously an American Japanese car, it uses NTSC, unfortunately. 
NTSC refresh rate of 15.75 kilohertz and a resolution of 640, um, standard 640 um, by 480. Um, unfortunately, I haven't got anything that will convert from one to the other. So if anyone knows of any really good uh, circuitry that I can either build or, or get that I can convert uh, into the right refresh rate for this. Scan converters are relatively easy to get hold of. Sorry? Scan, con scan converters are relatively easy to get hold of. Yes. Yes, they're quite expensive though. That's yes. the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking for a cheaper solution. Um, but on here you've got two interfaces here. Uh, I've already cheated and I've installed the cables under the seat. This one here. This one here goes from, this is your video cable. It goes from your can view and comes out this one here. Can you see this cable just here? This is your video out, which goes to the back of the LFD. Now, if you all promise to be very good and not to drop it, I'll show you the LFD. Okay, so that's the multi touch. Please don't drop it. Um, it's the um, touch, uh, touch screen interface. It's um, also used on certain Priuses, you, it's on the user interaction point. Um.